Awesome. I, I, uh, man, I could go on forever. I have so many questions. I do want to open it up to the audience. However, I have one last question. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, so over the years, since I've interacted with you, Arjun, uh, I think you were my first Yael, um, uh, contact, you know, in the, in the, in the, in this form and fashion. Um, I've interacted with others like Sean Swanson, who, um, who channels Aishua, um, Gita, who channels Bella. There's been other, and I've seen and, and heard other Yael channelers, and they all seem to have a slightly different flavor, slightly different. Um, uh, it's very similar in, in, in presentation and accent and ideas, but the story, I, I guess, the Yael story seems to shift from a version. There's different versions of the Yael. Can, do you have anything to say about that? Oh, yes. And thank you for this question. Mm. First of all, and of course, every single channel has their own filters. This mm. channel does it too. There is no, in that sense, human channeler. That is completely filter free if only already when looking at the vocabulary present in a specific individual that we are co-creating with in order to establish these type of transmissions, translations, interpretations, and reflections. So first of all, there is that, there is personality, there is personal journey. And for every type of channeling, you could say, in that way, that goes via another individual. It is always good for you as a listener or observer of these transmissions to remember that, first of all, you are speaking with us indirectly. And the prism through which we are being translated always adds some type of coloration. Now, then, on top of that, there is also the... Specific, you could say, we're looking for the translation. Blending or composition of every single individual's DNA, as you may have understood by now, after speaking with so many of your channelers, you as human beings have your own palette of colors. Every individual has their own composition, even genetically. Wherein some lean a little bit more into Pleiadian energy naturally, and some more into Syrian and so forth. Some have a strong affinity towards the Adir of the tall whites or Lyran energy or Anunnaki as well. You could say that when we reach out to you, we always go through what you understand to be your human collective higher self, your collective consciousness. Your group consciousness, we go through that filter and then through the non-physical filter as well of the higher self of the channel. And then there is the filter of the interpretation, the choosing of the specific words. So there are a multitude of prisms, you could say, along the way that we interact with. It is possible that somebody chooses to interact with us and along the way adds their own genetic resonance and harmony with, for instance, the tall wides or Anu Naki, and that to them, the information that we offer comes through as a storyline that has overlap more so with those energy vibrations than with quote unquote just from us creating. Entirely new perspectives, entirely new angles of perception and timelines altogether. So you may, if you will, realize that in speaking to different Yahyal channelers, you are peeking into the version of us that that individual is perceiving for their own reasons, mm -hmm. whether they are consciously aware of that or not. I see. Yep. Does that help clear it up a little bit? 
Yes, it does. Thank you. For example, there may be a pinch of a very ancient extraterrestrial species stirred in with our own, you could say, quote unquote, timeline as we understand it while living it, giving the impression that we are the cedars of Earth, for instance, of Earth, of humanity on Earth. This is not the timeline that is being perceived by the channel before you or that we would share with you. Yet it can be perceived like that for another channel. It aligns simply with other ancient species, if you understand what we're saying. I do. And in sharing that type of perspective, and here's the beauty, that reality is being created as it gains more people who resonate with that. And then you are creating your entirely new universe that has that storyline. So this is how these things, as you choose to channel, every single one of you, whatever you choose to channel, when you share your particular rainbow rays through the unique prisms that are part of your greater self, the way all that is shines through you and is being put into words or translated or interpreted for you and then with others resonating with that this is you creating new worlds with new timelines with new angles this is the creation process up close happening it's it, it's truly uh Thank you for putting it that way, because it truly shows us how uh, powerful creators we are uh, yes. and, and how we are literally making it up from the inside out instead of from the outside in. Yes. Yes. Super, super awesome. Um, all right. Lucas, you want to hop in with a question? Yes, this aligns so perfectly and uh, much gratitude to be able to connect in this way. Um, Thank you. Likewise. You, you mentioned how we all create our own reality. And I was curious, um, there's been a number of movies and shows, The Simpsons, that have had projections of potential futures that have ended up happening at, in very similar ways. And I was curious if, uh, if that was a manifestation of a future, a, a projection of a reality that came to pass, if that caused that future or what might have been at play in that case or in those cases? Oh, thank you so much. You are asking a bit of a chicken and egg question. What came first? You are, in a sense, first of all, many of your artists, many of your screenplay writers, authors, painters, singers, and so forth, and makers of cartoons, and particularly when there is a lot of humor involved, are in fact resonating very openly with that human uh, collective consciousness that we spoke about a little earlier, and are pulling from that field, you could say, particular possibilities. Now, especially when these possibilities, because everything is possible, though not perhaps probable, everything is possible. When these possibilities are being put out, you could say, channeled as a vision or an idea or even a joke through whatever type of media into the world, that is how it gains momentum. So the more people consciously or subconsciously then choose to harmonize with the concept offered to them, in a sense, every single one of them becomes an anchor for the crystallization of that particular idea and allows it to manifest through them. So you can joke yourself into all kinds of circumstances, really. Does that help? Very much. That's very interesting. All right. In, in creating our reality, do you have um, any additional advice as to 
um, how we can be more consciously connected to creating the realities we would like to see? By getting to know yourself better. It all comes down to know thyself. The more aware you are of what you are, consciously or subconsciously choosing to resonate with, helps you to navigate your dream reality in a much more awakened state of being and helps you to navigate it with more discernment, with more consciousness. You will see more reflections of that which you choose to be true for you rather than what you just randomly believe must be true for you. Does that assist? Yes. Thank you right. so much. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Go back to Tony. You, you had your hand up before. Hey, do you want to hop in there? Question. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Ruben. Uh, hi, Arjun. This is Tony Ghazi. It's so hi, Tony. Hi. Um, so I had a very personal experience this morning that I've never had before. How uh, exciting. It's very exciting. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I actually had my own discernment right now that was different from my other discernment that I had this morning. But let me explain. Um, so I, I wake up um, um, and, I, and I look at my phone and it's like literally 8 a.m. I'm like, okay, you know, I have to get up, um, you know, because it just happens at nine. And I go do my things. I take the dogs out. I have some coffee uh, and I'm making my shake. And like 45 minutes later, I look at the clock and it's 7.59 a.m. I could have sworn when I woke up, I saw on my phone 8 a.m. So, so, I mean, like, what happened there? Did I, what happened there? So let me hear your explanation. Crazy. You gave yourself some extra time. Wow. Okay. Uh, meaning, like, did I, because the first explanation I had is that I may have teleported an hour ahead and then, and then I kind of caught up. But as I'm listening to you now, um, like what I heard is I may have, um, like not moved time at all. And I was in the moment for a whole hour and a zero point. I don't know. You can choose to focus on the mechanics and you can choose to focus on the gift. Have you been feeling recently a need for more time? Yeah. That's your gift to yourself. You gave yourself some extra time. It allowed you to become more presently aware of where you are in the here and now moment, doing what you're doing in your morning. And by playing a bit of a trick on the conscious mind. And yes, of course, you could call that making a quantum leap or teleporting yourself in one way or another. But these are, quote unquote, just the mechanics. By having that seem odd or out of the ordinary, you gave yourself a very strong wake up call hint regarding the idea of your need that had been gaining some momentum for a while already to have more time. So you can give it to yourself in a very miraculous way, or you can use a very miraculous way to become more consciously aware of your need and desire and manifest it for yourself in more conscious manners more conscious ways as well that are, well, more fitting in with your time-space reality construct or the belief systems that you have built around that together as a collective. It's up to you. Either way, you gave yourself this reminder, this gift, this wake-up call for you to play with. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because my schedule is absolutely busy and I'm always working. And for whatever reason, like today, I haven't worked. And this all happens during the day where, like, literally in five years, I haven't stopped working. Uh, but, like, today I have completely no clients calling me. And, and this happens, like, so synchronistically, which is beautiful. You opened up this space. So thank you, thank you, thank you yourself for gifting this to you. And choose how you wish to perpetuate the energy vibration that you are feeling now with this space that is available to you. Awesome. I'm sweating for whatever reason. I'm in the basement. It's so cold here, but I'm literally 
you're choosing that particular physical, you could say, release to allow yourself a deeper realization again with a bit of a wing to go with the flow. You are such a blessing. Thank you. I'm doing the prayer mode with one hand because I'm holding the other. So, so thank you, thank you for all your gifts and, and um, love and light. And of course, Robin, thank you for everything that you do. It's absolutely amazing. Thanks, Our unconditional Tony. love to you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're you're not the only one uh, sweating, um, Tony. I every time I get on these calls, my, yeah. this is a habit. And then and then I'm back here working, and I don't sweat the rest of the day. It's crazy. Whenever uh, I'm like, I'm like, the hot seat. Okay. I know my coffee's doing some stuff. Okay, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> For many of you, the physical sensation of the rise in temperature also reflects to you in a playful manner your rise in vibration. There we right. go. Awesome. I'm getting vibed, high vibed every Sunday. Um, Sophia, go ahead. Hi. Yeah, I uh, hi June. I had a couple Hello. of very a couple of uh, personal questions actually similar to um to Tony that stem from a conversation I had with Ishwa actually what we are Trisha and Thompson. Um, I mentioned a, a sighting that I'd had uh, with, um, that involved the star Capella. And he said to me that that region holds one of your planets. Uh, I don't know, is that correct? You said you had a sighting involving that region. How do you mean exactly? Just, I saw what kind of looked like shooting stars throughout circling around um, Capella just when I looked up at it one night. One moment. Have you looked up the symbolical meaning of that region, of that star? Either uh, through your concepts of astrology or otherwise? I've read some, but I could probably do more research. Oh, we're not telling you what to do. It's just a suggestion because what we are getting from this sharing is that in the moment of that sighting, that information was relevant for you, the symbol connected to that region, to that star. And the idea of our planet being located there was more a Weaving, you could say, of the homecoming sensation that you felt in that interaction with the IL vibration and the, you could say, message you sent to yourself when you had the sighting. The weaving came through as if our home was there or in that direction. It yeah, not is literally that case. You can play with this however you wish. If you feel that the thought of our planet potentially being in that direction excites you, please go right ahead and picture us there. But if you wish, you can also explore deeper and see how that information as a symbol and the homecoming sensation that was in you, and the curiosity that still is in you, all tie together when you find meaning that has right now been partially still, not completely, but partially hidden from the conscious mind. You're playing, like most of you, a game of hide and seek. Does that assist you? Yes. And all right. It might be related to another thing that you said to me about having a had an in utero DNA implantation from 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 a light race that you could only describe as blue. And I'm still none the wiser as to what that is or what I'm meant to to do with it. Is it meant to be of any sort of service? And how do I go about utilizing that? Oh, thank you for picking up on the energy vibration of the idea of service. Because that is what we see too. When you asked this question, when you had that conversation, 
if we instantly to that encounter and also up to this part right now, has there been in you some desire of sharing something with the world, something creatively flowing from you that you have not verbalized to, let's say, not just your closest friends, but also the outside world? Is there a desire to share something that you've been holding back in? Well, I suppose the only creativity is something I struggle with, but also that I, I may be blocking something there. But I suppose the other thing I've been doing is a lot of, well, bits and pieces of healing. I probably don't share enough about. <laughs> or there's no have to, you, there's no must or should in no way. When you say creativity, what is the direction that you naturally lean into most effortlessly? Are you talking about visual writing, singing, dancing? What is it? Uh, probably, probably all three of those actually writing, singing and dancing. Yeah. All right. So is there, you could say a storyline that is at the tip of your tongue, but isn't completely coming out just yet? I'm, no, I think I must be stuck somewhere and I've got it. And that is me to work on. Well, work, stuck, these are all very heavy terms you're using in your current choice of definition in looking at these things, we would say, if you wish, if you resonate with this idea to play, first of all, more lightly with the definitions that you have chosen so far, so that you can give yourself a bit of a break, take some of the load off your shoulders. And then by, for instance, this may be for assistance to anybody else listening in that feels they haven't gotten to doing something that they've been desiring to do for a long time. Instead of defining yourself as having failed to do that up until now, for instance, say I have chosen to play with the idea of not doing that up until now. So then at least your definition sounds as if you've gotten something out of it. It was an experience and you chose to have it. In that way, you grab your, you could say, self-empowerment. You get your power back. You gift it to yourself yet again. You put the situation in your hands and you can feel more self-empowered in choosing your next step along the way. In the next activity, you choose to give your attention to in that manner. Now, back to the idea of the blue ray. You could say that the idea of this conception is about the divinely inspired, creative imagination that is uniquely yours, that you felt a desire to express more openly, but haven't chosen to explore just yet in that way. You see, we're deliberately putting the new definition in place right away for you, if that's okay. You saw this, or it was reflected back to you as something that was, quote unquote, put in the womb because it had to do with a lot of emotions still connected to this idea of your creative expression and also the idea of birthing, obviously, and it being born through you. And lastly, the color blue also cross connects to the idea of your throat chakra. This is why we are referring to a storyline that writing or speaking or singing might all be parts of that. You have something to share that nobody else can share exactly in that manner. You are inspired to take action on that and you are free to choose the divine timing for that. Explore the limiting beliefs that have been keeping you, quote-unquote, or that you have been choosing to put in your own way up until now as an experience. Explore those. And you could say, cut the wires from those little minds on your path so that they are no longer coming across to the rational mind as explosives, 
so that you will feel the path is safe and open for you to dance and sing upon. Does that assist you? It assists me very much. Thank you very, very much, Adrian. Oh, thank you so very, very much. We send you our unconditional love.